As I said earlier, we are producing more biofuels right now than at any point in our history. In fact, production has increased more than 40% over the last three years. So this is an industry that's creating jobs and driving economic growth, especially in rural America, but to the benefit of all Americans. That's because the industry is helping to protect our environment and bring the country closer to energy independence. For all of those reasons, this administration has been committed to building a robust bio-based economy, while, but with biofuels as a pillar of the president's all of the above energy strategy. And that's why, for example, we stand firmly behind the renewable fuel standard, which we think is a critical tool to promote continued growth in the renewable fuels industry in the years ahead. And we've taken a number of steps to encourage deployment of the biofuels technologies we have in hand today, while also accelerating the development of new fuel technologies in our labs and at commercial scale. On the deployment side, the Department of Energy and the uh, Environmental Protection Agency have been working to create new opportunities for today's biofuels to play a bigger role in transportation. For example, the administration has provided a path forward for E15. In addition, the Department of Agriculture has funded more than 130 projects that are currently producing enough renewable fuel to keep 5 million vehicles on the road every year. And to help develop the infrastructure needed to bring biofuels to the marketplace, last year USDA provided financial assistance to support 250 blender pumps across the country. In a parallel effort, we're working to rapidly develop and deploy the next generation of advanced biofuels, everything from cellulosic fuels to algae oils. DOE has invested over $1 billion, which has been cost shared by $1.7 billion in private sector investment, to support 29 biorefineries, including a number of commercial scale projects. USDA has also helped to push the envelope when it comes to advanced biofuels. To date, they've supported efforts to build more than a half dozen advanced biorefineries across the country. To build on those efforts, just last week, the administration announced new investments to speed the development of drop-in biofuel substitutes for diesel and jet fuel. This is part of the broader effort by the Navy, DOE, and USDA to support the commercialization of drop-in biofuels that can meet the fuel needs of the United States military and the commercial aviation and shipping sectors. It shouldn't come as a surprise that the U.S. military is stepping up to the plate. That's business as usual for them. That's what they do. Now, to be clear, the Defense Department isn't embracing clean energy and renewable fuels because it sounds good. They're doing it because it makes sense from an operational and national security perspective. Unfortunately, that hasn't stopped some in Congress from putting forward short-sighted legislation that would undermine the military's ability to invest in alternative fuels. And this gets to my point earlier, that some folks, especially here in Washington, are resistant to change even when it's so clearly needed. As Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta put it recently, these efforts could deprive commanders of the flexibility they need to meet tactical and operational needs and make us more exposed to potential supply disruptions and future price volatility of petroleum products. Moving forward, we all know there's a lot more work to be done to create a more robust bioeconomy and more broadly a clean energy economy. But all of the progress I've talked about today is a testament to what we can do when we don't let the absence of an overnight solution to our energy challenges serve as a reason to do nothing at all. So we've got to keep at it. Congress in particular needs to get beyond the short-termism and short-sightedness that causes boom and bust cycles in clean energy. We can't build these industries up only to tear them back down. The United States is not going to win the clean energy race if we're only planning ahead one year at a time. Instead, we need to take the long view, make a sustained effort, and swing for the fences. Over the long haul, that's the only way we'll solve America's toughest energy challenges.